Hi everyone, Adam here. In this video, we're going to create a bunch of drop down menus where we pick the metrics that we're interested in. And what we want to do is we want to pull in the player's data who we select for the event that we select. And we're going to expand on that in future videos, including comparisons between positions and teams and to the player's history, etc., uh, in later videos. So, to start that process, we're going to use data validation to create drop down menus as we've done before. So, first let's click on cell G5, or column G. And we're going to go to data, data validation. Again, list from a range. We're getting lots of practice with this. We'll reject the input if it's not one of the things we pick. And now we need to get a list of our metrics to pick from. So, let's click on this select data range. We have two different ways we can do this now. The first is we can go to our admin page and select our metric list or whatever we want in our metric list from here. The other thing that we could do is we could go to our testing data page and just select column one so that it includes all of our metrics and whatever metrics we add. Essentially, it's the same thing as doing it on the admin page. But we're going to select column one here, click OK and save. And now when we go to our chart data, when we go to our team dashboard, we should have a drop down list of all of our metrics. All right, cool. So let's copy, or first let's merge G and H together. Let's merge it together. And I want the data to go right here. So let's copy this and just paste it down, I don't know, let's say 10, 10 cells. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Paste it. So now we have 10 potential metrics to choose from. I'm just going to color the backgrounds of these cells. Let's color them uh, gray and let's have a black black text in them. And we'll just pick pick a different metric for each. One with, with, with actual data. So CMJ average, broad jump, 10M sprint, 20M sprint. I'm just going through and selecting some metrics here. Let's do body weight, kind of random. Uh, VO2 max, body fat. And this is important because this is where when we set up our lower is better, it'll come into play here. Let's do TBDL 1RM, bench 1RM, and uh, I don't know, TBDL relative strength. Where's that? Okay, perfect. So we have 10 metrics here. And we want the values to show up right here for each metric for the camp that we select for the player that we select. And the rest of this video, we're going to figure out how to do that. And the way that I want to start this process is with a function called average ifs. I love average ifs. It is my favorite formula to use, and you will see why. It's also interchangeable with min ifs and max ifs and sum ifs. So if you're making changes, you can just change from getting an average to get a max, to get a minimum, to get the sum of something. It's, it's really cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm nerdy. So to get the average of this, or to get the CMJ average for this player on this date, let's start with equals average ifs, open parenthesis. Now, what does average if average average ifs need? The first thing that it needs is what you want to get the average of. And in our case, let's go to our testing data. And what is that? That's CMJ average, right? So let's select column L. We want to get the average of all the CMJ averages. And the next thing that the criteria needs or average if needs, comma, is a criteria range. So pretty much it's saying we get it, you want the average of something, but with what criteria, when what is true or when what isn't true. So for our criteria range, we want it for when the player name, comma, is equal to the player that we select. For now, I'm just going to put in a number one here, comma, and also when the event ID that we created, right, because that's what we're picking from in our drop down list, the event ID, comma, is equal to the event ID that we select. And for now, I'm just going to type in a one and close the parenthesis and click enter. And of course, we have an error because our formula doesn't make sense. I typed in ones because I didn't want to go back and forth between sheets. I do that sometimes. Like when I'm working 
on my own personally, I just generally use ones and then fill in the gaps later when I'm on the sheet where the formula is. So now we're on the sheet. I want to get the average of, of the CMJ average when the player name in our database is equal to one, which should be, let's remove the one, this cell here, the player name that we select, and when the camp ID or the event ID is equal to one. But we actually want it when the event ID is equal to whatever the event is that we select in F3 here. And we can click enter. And now we have the average, counter movement jump average, for the person that we selected and the camp that we selected. If we select a different person, the average will change. And if we select a different camp or a different session, the average will change. And the reason why we can use average here and just display the number for this session and player is because there's only one uh, there's only one instance of that event. Now, if you had five counter movement jump averages on the same date for a player, you'd get the average of all of those averages, if that makes sense. But because there's only one CMJ average for this player on this event, we're just getting the value as it is. The average of the value itself is the value itself. Okay, but this is not dynamic. If we change this to CMJ trial one, this is not going to change. So what we have to do is we have to make this dynamic. I'm going to hold down control and click Z to undo what I just did. And the first thing that we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to lock in column A for the testing data area. Leave L to L alone because we're going to change that. And let's lock in A and 3 because when we drag this formula down or copy and paste it down, we don't want this reference of the event that we picked to move. Let's lock in column H. Let's lock in F and 3. Again, because we don't, as we copy this formula down, we do not want the reference for the name of the athlete that we select to move. And click Enter. And notice, nothing has changed. Now what we're going to change here is instead of telling Google Sheets what column we want to get the average of, we're going to use index and match. Yeah, you got it. So instead of saying we want column L to L, we're going to go index, open parenthesis, and go to our testing data, and say we want anything from cell A1 colon, anything from the first cell in the upper left all the way to, oops, all the way to, how many metrics, all the way to CL. Okay, sorry, it, it kind of, Google Sheets does that sometimes. So on A1 to CL, right, so we want to look for something, something in, in that whole spreadsheet, and we don't know what, because, because what we're looking for is dictated by what metric we select. And we don't have to worry about the row. So remember the index. The first thing that we need to know is the row that we need to look in. And it's optional. And we're going to take that option. So we'll do a comma. The reason why we don't need a row is because we're already getting the row from lining up the athlete name with the athlete that we pick and the session with the session that we pick. That denotes the row of the data that we get in this index match formula. So we're going to match next for the column for the index. And what we're going to look for for that column is our search key is going to be the metric that we select. If it just plays nicely with me here, I can, I can select the metric, comma. We're going to find what we need to match up to this or the column headers in the testing data. But before we do that, because I don't want it to do weird things, I'm going to do a couple of dashes here and hope that it lets me go to the next sheet. And it does. Okay, that's great. Do don't worry about these dashes. It's just, I don't know what it is. But we want to match G5 or the metric that we select in our dashboard to whatever's in column one. And do another comma and add a zero and close off these parentheses and comma and remove these dashes. I'll talk through it. So just take a good look at the formula. I'll walk through it. So. We want to get the average of, let's just say something. We want to get the average of something when whatever's in column A 
which is the athlete name, is equal to the athlete that we pick, and whatever's in column H, which is the event ID, is equal to the event that we pick, or the session that we pick. And what we want to get the average of is complicated. We want to look for stuff in this entire sheet, A1 to CL, the entire sheet, and the column that we want to get the average of, we want to match the metric that we pick to the column header. So if we select CMJ average, it's going to go, okay, let's see what column number CMJ average is in. Boom, this one. And we're going to get the average of this column. Again, for the player that we pick and the event that we pick. So we're essentially getting the value for that player. And I'm just going to, let's see, close off these parentheses, right? Or there are none left and click enter. And here's our formula. And if we change this to CMJ trial one, there's that person's CMJ trial one on that session. If it's CMJ trial three, there's their trial three. So this can be any metric that we want and it'll bring in whatever we want it to bring in. The last thing that we want to do here, or there are two things, is first we want to lock in our range. So we'll go A1 to CL and we'll lock in G but not the five so that we can copy this formula down. And we'll lock in by putting a dollar sign before it, both of the ones. And then, like we usually do, we'll say if error after the equal sign, open parenthesis, if there's an error with this big old formula here, what do we want to do? We'll do comma, quote, quote, or make it blank. That's what we want to do if there's an error. We'll close the parenthesis and click enter. And now we can copy this formula and paste it to all these cells here. And we have the numbers for all these cells. This is in season, right? They didn't do all these tests. Let's go to a training camp. Oh, training camp 2020. And now all of our data fills out. So now we have kind of a dynamic way of interacting with our information on a per metric basis and for a camp and for an athlete that we pick or and for an event, an athlete that we pick. So this is a great start. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you for it. And I'm excited for the next video because we're going to do some more data setup stuff that will allow us to compare these values that the athlete has to position, team, to themselves. We're going to start really building out a dynamic interactive framework that allows us to see a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.